Here we go. Welcome back to the Fit Rich Show. Um, so today, you guys, I just want to quickly say, I don't think I've said this for a while. You know, I really appreciate you guys always sort of tuning in. Um, the reason why I said that, because this week I had about three or four different messages from guys just reached out. And it's just, you know, generally nice to, you know, help you guys in the DMs um, on my Instagram. Um, obviously, those few guys that, that reached out, you know, helped them, sent them over some stuff and, you know, sent them on their way. And hopefully, you know, it really helps them moving forward to the end of the year. So I really appreciate you guys. Um, so let's get stuck into the show. So I've got a really, really interesting show today. Um, got an interview interviewee on. Normally I've been doing sort of these podcasts on my own, guys. So a few of you have been saying, get some guests on, get some interesting guys on. So we've got um, Dr. Anthony uh, Chafee today. He's going to come on the show, going to introduce him. And we're going to talk about the importance of protein meat. Guys, so I've been getting a lot of questions from guys very confused you know a lot of men i stopped eating meat because i want to lose weight or i was feeling bloated so we've obviously got you know the main man the doctor on the show today and he's going to literally put this to put this to bed you know let's let's put it to bed and let's let's tell you guys what's really going on in today's world so welcome to the show and over from australia originally from the from the us um how you doing i'm doing great man how are you fantastic buddy so tell us what what brought you to Australia. I know we just spoke on the on the um, briefly, didn't we? Um, so just give us a quick intro, buddy. Sort of how long you've been doing this. What got you into sort of mm-hmm. you know you know you're studying and, and becoming a sort of doctor in this sort of field. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Um, uh, my name is yeah, Dr. Anthony Chafee. I'm an American medical doctor uh, practicing currently in Australia, training yeah. in neurosurgery. Um, but I, I do a lot of research into diet and nutrition and how that affects health and chronic disease sort of outside of neurosurgery as well, because I had a sports background. I played professional rugby for 10 years before medical school. I did MMA since I was 14, one of the you know top gyms at, you know, AMC kickboxing with Matt Hume in Kirkland, yeah. uh, right outside of Seattle. And so I've sort of been in that sort of athletic space for a long time. And, and obviously nutrition is a very big part of that. Yeah. Um, I've actually been carnivore for you know, eating a strict meat and water diet, no plants whatsoever for about 22 years. Now uh, I started 22 years ago when I took cancer biology at the university of Washington in Seattle. And we're just right. learning that, that plants have toxins. They have a lot of toxins. In fact, that's how they defend themselves from animals and insects eating them. And we learned it as a cancer perspective, found out they were quite carcinogenic. They were quite harmful, actually way worse than the pesticides we spray on them. And, you know, my, my professor at the time, we were learning this and we were all very shocked by this. And he just looked at us and he said, you know, I don't eat salads and I don't eat, I don't eat vegetables and I don't let my kids eat vegetables. Really? Plants are trying to kill you. Yeah. He just said very simply like that. And so I was like, right, screw it. Uh, You know, screw plants. And I just stopped. And so I just started eating meat exclusively after that. And my athletic performance just, just went to entirely new levels. And so I was doing that for several years. I ended up slipping off of it when I was uh, playing professionally in England, uh, just because some of the meat was breaded. I was like, Oh, is that that big of a deal? And, you know, and it sort of just, that was, that was sort of the, the chink in the arm. I sort of slipped off of it, but I was still very meat based. And then five years ago, I sort of came back onto it really realized like, no, we really are carnivores. That's just the kind of animal that we are. Humans are animals and the kind of animal we are, are carnivores. And mm. looking at that from a medical standpoint, that we, we are not eating a species specific diet, which will harm any animal. You know, you have animals in the zoo, they have a sign that says, don't feed the animals. They'll get sick if they, if they eat something else, we get sick if we eat something that we're not supposed to eat. And so looking at that from a, from a doctor's standpoint, you know, things just started slotting into place and making sense. And a lot of the chronic disease burden that we have, heart disease, diabetes, even cancer, autoimmune diseases, certainly autoimmune diseases, and even Alzheimer's and so forth. These are all really caused by eating the wrong thing. They're not actually diseases. They're, a, they're just toxicities and malnutrition. So the and health so been, choices you choose and, you know, the, the decisions you make, right? That's it. And, and, and because of that, they're entirely preventable and even reversible. And so that's, sort of outside of neuro or even in neurosurgery, I I try to coach my patients and try to help them get better with, you know, chronic pain issues, even cancer issue. Obviously we deal with a lot of high burden of cancer in neurosurgery. And, uh, and this just, just helps people get better traumatic brain injuries. I mean, there's tons of studies showing that just even a ketogenic diet is, it helps significantly 
uh, in the healing of traumatic brain injuries. And so this is something that can, that can ultimately help everyone. Yeah. And, and I've been trying to sort of incorporate that more and more in my practice as I go. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, cool. That's perfect. Good little sort of intro how the, you know, what the carnivore diet is. So mm -hmm. let me get this straight. So you, you don't eat any like vegetables at all, right? Yeah, yeah that's it. First, first of all, you don't need them. You know, there, there's, there are no nutrients in plants that you can't get from eating meat. Okay. But there are plenty of nutrients in meat that you have to have that you cannot get from plants. Okay? Like so, what? Like your zinc, your B12? So B12, B12, D3, K2, uh, you'll never get enough vitamin A from eating plants. You'd have to eat six pounds of carrots a day to get enough vitamin A. You won't get like the essential fatty acids, DHA, EPA, all these different sorts of things, the very long chain fatty acids that are, that it's what your brain is made out of. Um, we don't, we don't really make those fatty acids well ourselves. They don't exist in plants or fungus. You have to get them from meat. Um, even cholesterol, you know, cholesterol is, is as, as scary as it sounds, uh, it's an essential nutrient and it's not bad for you. It does not cause heart disease. That, yeah, that's yeah. completely debunked. So and, just, let me just uh, to explain that to the guys. So <clears throat> what sort of Anthony means is it doesn't give you cholesterol. The only way you get cholesterol guys is if you're overweight. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it can be, it can be passed down kind of, but most of the times, I mean, you'll probably experience a little bit better, Anthony, but the only, the only reason why guys are getting cholesterol is because they're overweight, right? They're eating too much shit. Yeah. Well, there's, there, well, there's obviously there's a whole bunch of different kinds of cholesterol, Yeah, yeah. but cholesterol in and of itself, isn't actually bad for you. Um, you know, you have different LDL carrier proteins, yeah. right? But most of those are actually good for you too. Yeah. And so they've, they've been given <clears throat> sort of a, a false bad name. You can get damaged cholesterol and you can get like small dense lipoproteins and very low dense uh, lipoproteins. And those can be damaged and those can be used to build up atherosclerotic plaques. But that's, um, that's just a, a, an inflammatory pathway. It's not the cholesterol, the number of cholesterol that's causing that. It's actually from carbohydrates, alcohol, smoking. Those are the main, the there main factors. Yeah. And so when you damage these lipoproteins, you turn them into small dense lipoproteins, you make those ones, then those get used up um, because our body can't use them normally. You have to, our macrophages are the only things that can pick them up. They turn into these giant foam cells. They get stuck into these damaged arterial walls, yeah. but it's not the high level of cholesterol that will cause that. In fact, we're seeing in all the studies that higher LDL cholesterol, and there's many different kinds of LDL cholesterol, but just overall LDL cholesterol being higher has actually been associated with longer life, better health, lower stroke rate, lower uh, heart disease rate. So this has been completely turned on its head, um, but you can certainly damage your cholesterol. One good thing, just, just for everyone who's interested, if you look at your cholesterol and your HDL is high and your triglycerides are low, don't worry what your LDL is. That's basically just a good rule of thumb that everything's okay. So and say that again, will, sorry. So if, you're, if your LDL is high, but you're if, if your HDL is high, right and your triglycerides are low, so both in the normal accepted ranges, yeah. then you don't have to worry about LDL. LDL yeah. is, is going to be good for, there'll be the good kind of LDL right. there. If your HDL is lower and your triglycerides are higher, then you're at risk for having these damaged LDL cholesterols. And you can get those done. Yeah. There's specialized tests you can see. Yeah. what's going on there with your ldl I've just, just recently yeah i've just recently done a full sort of blood test myself actually waiting for the results so yeah i do that yeah. every six months just you know check things over you know if you're training hard eating well i always do it um okay cool so obviously the most the biggest misconception is i think it's sort of been a little bit you know debunked nowadays but the first thing guys do is always stop eating red meat if they think they got high cholesterol or you know, I only have eggs a few times a week. So personally, I mean, I've had a, I pretty much eat steak every morning for, I, I really don't know how long. And I have it with almond butter on the top. I don't know if you've tried that, by the way. Um, no, I haven't. Just normal I've, butter. Yeah, for me. Just steak. Yeah. I cook it at night, put it in the fridge, put the butter on. And in the morning, it's like fucking marinated into the <laughs> steak. Oh, it's so good. Um, yeah. So I've done that and I'm still alive, right? So, um, yeah. so yeah. So what's your sort of thoughts on that? I know you, what you're going to say, but. Just yeah. explain to the guys, like, you know, red meat is not giving you high cholesterol, nor is the yellow part of the egg, right? Well, well and, and, either, and either way, you know, even, you know, even if it does give you high cholesterol, it's still good cholesterol. 
Right. You know, HDL is the good cholesterol. LDL is the other good cholesterol. It's actually been thrown on its on its head. So the Journal of the American Medical Association, one of the top medical journals in the world, published in 2015 actual internal memos from the sugar companies back in the 60s, detailing how they paid off three Harvard professors to falsify data and publish fraudulent uh -huh. studies to make it appear as if cholesterol caused heart disease when it was really sugar, and then to say sugar was safe. Yeah. And then one of those professors was named head of the USDA, and it was he who authored and published the 1977 USDA declaration that cholesterol caused heart disease. And that was the, that was just the end of the that discussion. Was set in stone, yeah. But it's flat out fraud. And we have hard documentation of that. So cholesterol is actually good for you. Think of it this way. Every single cell in your body, the cell membrane is cholesterol. Every single cell in your body is cholesterol. Your brain is made out of cholesterol. All of your hormones are made out of cholesterol, testosterone, estrogen, uh, progestogens, mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids, cortisol, all these things. Every single one of them is made from uh, cholesterol. Okay. So it's actually a very important molecule. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got a good pick your brains, but actually you probably better help a lot of the guys here. So a lot of our students that come to us or guys that reach out to me, especially in this region, I'm not sure in Australia or America, but the first thing doctors do is chuck them on uh, tablets, right? Just because their cholesterol is a little bit high, you know, oh, yeah, bang these in you, you know, they, these will sort you out. Not like, you know, go down to the gym and start eating, you know, better. It's like, right, get these tablets in you. If you've got hypertension, yeah. start taking these tablets. I mean, that's totally, again, you, you know, you, you're the doctor here, but I totally disagree with that. And I think 99, oh, I yeah, 99% out, out of the time, you don't need to be taking tablets to lower your cholesterol, right? No. Well, also, you, you don't actually necessarily want to. Uh, there's a lot of studies with, you know, there was a study with like 60, citric, yeah. Yeah, there was like, like 68,000 people over the age of 65. This is the main heart disease sort of cohort. And, and they found that people on statins were actually doing worse. Yeah. They were actually having more heart attacks. They were dying before the other guy. So, you know, why is that? And now we know that cholesterol is actually not bad for you. So why do we want to lower it? You know, and that, and that makes sense that, you know, if you're lowering something that's good for you and you're giving yourself some people showing that you either have equivocal, uh, you know, an equivalency or slightly worse uh, outcomes. And so, you know, if, if it was just one-to-one -one cholesterol coming down, heart disease going down, you would, you would see a benefit, but you don't. So it's, um, it's, mu it's much, much more complicated than that anyway. It's not just a one-to-one -one relationship. It's a, an entire disease process, but yeah, yeah. It, it does not have to do with, with yeah, higher levels of LDL yeah, cholesterol. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's, yeah it's crazy, isn't it? Um, it's yeah. just the easy answer, I guess. Um, yeah. cause, cause most doctors, Anthony, you know, conventional sort of doctors, you know, they, when they do their course, it's like a seven year course, right. To be a doctor, mm. you know, a, you know, mainstream doctor, whatever you want to call it. And I think, you know, you, maybe, you know, better, but I think like they spend like two days on, you know, nutrition yeah, yeah. and then like health, if, if it's, that, yeah. if that, yeah. So yeah. they really don't know nothing or they, you know, they're amazing people. They help people. They do a lot of other things. And when it comes to exercise, and nutrition, you know, 99% of the time, they don't have a clue what they're on about really, you know? No. And the problem is too, is that now they're a doctor. So now they're a so-called health professional. Mm, and yeah. so whatever misconceptions that they had going into this, basically fat's bad, vegetables are good. Well, now, because that's what I believe and I'm a health professional, it's set in stone, even though they, there's actually nothing in medical school that has told us that vegetables are good for us. In fact, we learn a lot about how plants are bad for us because we look at this between um, you know, allopathic medicine and naturopathic medicine, where a naturopath would say, well, we would say, hey, we want to I, isolate this substance like digoxin and give you this exacting you know, micro, um, microgram dose and that will be a, a proper range. And then the naturopath say, well, actually we should give you the whole plant and then, you know, and you can get the other things that are in that plant with it. And we say, whoa, that's not good because there are all these defense chemicals in there. there's all these toxins in there because that's how plant, plants work. And you don't know what the dose is. You don't know what this is. You know what? So we actually learn that plants are toxic. We mm -hmm. actually learn that this is not the right way of doing things. And yet in the same mindset, we say eat your vegetables, you know, and, uh, and it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Um, you're completely right. You know, we have this mentality in medicine just over the last you know, probably over the past, course of the past century, when pharmaceuticals have, have been much more uh, prevalent, that we have, a, you have a problem, you have a pill, that's the mentality. And so you, you learn what pill goes with yeah. what problem in medical school. And I think that's completely wrong. Um, 
I think you're right. You, you treat things with diet and lifestyle first. I mean, there's, there's an ancient Egyptian adage that said, um, you know, um, uh, one quarter of what you eat feeds you and the other three quarters feed your doctor, you know, because you're getting sick and you're going to have to go pay him. Right. Uh, yeah. So, and that's the thing. And, and they, they knew it back then. And they, this is the birth of agriculture as well. They were, and they were getting, you look at statues in ancient, ancient Egypt, you know, they had like, they had, uh, you know, uh, man boobs and guts and <laughs> things like that, you know, and, uh, and, and they had atherosclerosis, you yeah. know, it wasn't just the Pharaohs, you know, they, they mummified, basically everyone that was those their burial practices and so we actually have millions of examples uh available to us they all had these problems and there's a stable isotopes um study where you take stable isotope nitrogen 15 and you can actually see what people were eating and you can actually see what animals were eating you see who were herbivores and who was eating the herbivores because it concentrates down and you see who was eating the carnivores that were eating the herbivores and so on and you can stack up the you know the, the food chain you actually found that humans had a higher carnivore rating than even lions, hyenas, and wolves and foxes alive in the same time in the same area. So we, we have been apex predators, top of the food chain, carnivores for about the last 2 million years, 2 to, two to 2.5 million years. Mm. In Egypt, found that they were actually eating a very high burden of grains, not just the, the normal people, the pharaohs as well. And they all were getting atherosclerosis. They were all getting gynecomastia and, yeah, and, yeah, high and, and, just, and, and just big fat bodies and things like that yeah. to the point that it, it was you know, evident in their artwork mm -hmm. where you look at the Greek artwork, guys are jacked, you yeah. know, and they like put a high, high onus on meat. The, um, the ancient Olympic games, you know, there is, is very well recorded that when you were training for the Olympics, you were just eating meat, 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 right. meat. You get all the meat that you could, could get your hands on. That was a very yeah, common yeah, practice. Interesting. Interesting. So I guess, Anthony, I mean, what, what, I mean, explain to me, like, obviously you got your macronutrients, you know, your meat, you know, your fats, like, talk, so where, so where are you getting your sort of micronutrients from? You know, um, talk to me about that because obviously, you know, guys, micronutrients are your, you know, your vitamins, your mm -hmm. your vegetables, right? So, where are you getting that from in your diet? Yeah. So the thing is, is that we we've, we've basically been conned there as well. You know, we were told that that cholesterol was bad for us, therefore meat was bad for us, therefore meat and eggs were really bad for us because they had a lot of cholesterol and saturated fat, and that was the idea. And then there was this, this misconception where they said, well, you should eat vegetables because you want to, you want to lose fat. You eat fiber because it doesn't have any nutrients. And that was the whole point was that plants didn't have a lot of nutrients. They had a lot of fiber. And so you would actually get less nutrition uh, or less calories than you would get. You would get less calories from the food than it would take to actually digest the food. There's a celery diet back in like the eighties and nineties. <laughs> You'd eat as much celery as you wanted to. And you would actually burn calories by eating celery, right? Which is stupid. I mean, yeah, <laughs> of course yeah, there's other things going crazy. on there. And there's tons of toxins in there. And first of all, like celery will make you very sensitive to sunlight. You can get like, you know, this thing called celery dermatitis where really? people that get a very sensitive sun, they just scorch in the sun oh, shit. Uh, if, they're, if they're eating a lot of celery. So there's a lot of toxins in these things. And the, the micronutrients sort of saying that vegetables had a lot of nutrients. They were saying this was in proportion to the calories because they have almost no calories, because they have almost no nutrition, they said, oh, this has a very, very dense uh, nutrient profile. That's not true. It's dense in comparison to calories, but there actually aren't many nutrients in there. There are. There are definitely vitamins and minerals that are, that are good for you in these plants. There aren't that many of them. They so come at you, a cost. So do you, sorry to break you. So would you, would you agree like, you know, the good things, the easy things like broccoli and things like that. Are they, I mean, would you would you squeeze them in there now and again, Ant, or just totally? No, 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 I never touch any of them. Yeah, no, okay. plants are trying to kill you, and like that's not you know that's not you know not in the sense that they're trying to like they, they have any animosity towards you and they're coming after you, but they're living organisms, you know, and they want to stay living organisms. If they get eaten, they die, and so all living things have a defense. And while animals can run away or fight back, plants can't, and so they use other methods. And one of those methods is, is by just being physically poisonous. You know, some animals are as well, little, you know, toads in the rainforest or certain yeah, insects yeah. and things like that, <laughs> because they're defenseless. They're small, defenseless little yeah, animals. You know, a, a, a buffalo is not defenseless. You know, that thing will kill you, yeah. you know, and, uh, and if you mess with it or with its kids, it will try to kill you. Yeah. So, you know, they have defenses that are different, you know, a plant can't do that. And so it, it has these, these toxins. And so even if it does have 
some nutrients in it, it comes at a cost. It comes at a, at a burden of, of uh, toxicity that is better or worse. I mean, we know, we know this inherently, right? You get lost out in the woods, you run out of food. You can't just eat any random plant, right? You know, most of them will make you very sick or even kill you. You know, most plants are inedible, mm -hmm. right? And yet we think that at the same time, that doesn't apply to spinach. It does apply to spinach. It's just, we have some defenses against the things that are in spinach. We don't have the same defenses against hemlock. You know, but there are insects and, and things that eat hemlock that cannot eat spinach, right? Because they have the defenses towards <clears throat> that. We don't. So as far as the micronutrients go, um, you know, in, in the plants, first of all, it's not as many nutrients as, you, as we're told, but also they're not bioavailable. So, you know, all the iron that's in spinach is, oh, there's all this iron in there. It's really good for you. And that's why they say like, you know, Popeye, you've, you just spinach, you've got you to eat like two kilos of it, you, to like... <laughs> we would, but, but it's even worse than that because yeah. it's, um, it's not bioavailable. So the amount of iron that's just, that's just in there is not actually accessible to us. Yeah. And so you, you, you eat all that, you will not absorb the iron that's in the spinach and, or the proteins. People don't realize that they're trying to get, you know, people trying to work out and then trying to get like, you know, plant-based proteins. It doesn't work as well because they're not bioavailable. You can't absorb it as well. Um, you know, the, the protein and gluten, 80% of protein and gluten, or sorry, a protein in wheat is gluten. And gluten is absolutely not bio. You cannot get any protein or amino acids from gluten. So right off the top, 80% of the protein that's in wheat, not usable. And then they have things called protease inhibitors that block the enzymes from your pancreas that break down protein. And so now it's even less uh, available. So even if you eat meat, which is 100% bioavailable protein, you're going to, you're going to absorb less than that. If you eat it in a sandwich, right? If you eat some bread with your meat, you're going to get those protease inhibitors. That's going to prevent you from uh, breaking down your meat properly. So there are a lot of things that come up with that. But when you look at that, the, the recommended daily allowances, the RDAs, right? Those came about during a time that everyone was just eating a mixed diet. They were eating carbs and plants and meat as well. Depending on what you eat, you need a different constellation of nutrients, right? If you're eating carbohydrates, for instance, you will actually need to eat a lot more vitamins. Um, a simple example of that is vitamin C, right? They say, oh, there's not enough vitamin C, you'll get scurvy on me. Well, I've been doing this for five years straight now. I did it for five years straight in my early 20s. The Inuits do it their entire lives. The Maasai do it their entire lives. The Mong Genghis Khan, the Mongol horde did it their entire lives and so mm -hmm. on. So that's not really true. And we've also been carnivores 2 million years, right? So you need, if you're eating carbohydrates, vitamin C just is, is used differently and absorbed differently in your body. You're not, you're not having any carbs at all, Anne, right? You're just no, no. pure, absolute meat. I'm going to ask you your diet in a minute. Go on. I won't break, yeah. your, I won't yeah. break your, your rhythm there. Go on. It's all good. Yeah. So if you're, if you're eating carbohydrates, then you need vitamin C measured in milligrams. But if you're not eating carbohydrates, you only need vitamin C measured in nanograms, which is one millionth of a milligram. Okay. So it's a very, very different story. So when you are exclusively eating meat, you will get everything you need in the proportion that you need it just from eating meat. But if you start eating other things that can screw with that as well. And you see like polar explorers that went up and were with the Inuits and things like that. Um, and everyone was fine. They were just eating, just eating meat for you know, years. And then, you know, one guy would start getting sick, very, very unwell. I'm like, oh, what the hell's happening? They found a bunch of like, you know, sailor's biscuits in his pack. And I was like, you idiot, you know, and they took it out, threw it out. He just started eating meat, full recovery, you know? Yeah. So there, there are tons of stories of that. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, I've got to ask you the question now then, mate, after all that, um, what, what you've said. So, so, how, so how many calories are you eating a day? You, so run me through like your day, run me through what, what you're up to. Yeah. So, so usually I, I, I usually eat sort of once, maybe twice a day if I'm working out a lot. Um, if I'm not working out, I generally just eat once in the evening and then I wake up in the morning. I'm not hungry. I don't need to eat for breakfast. I don't need to stop for lunch. I just go, 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 go. I've got just tons of energy. I, you know, if I'm, you know, depending on my work schedule, I usually try to go and work out after, um, uh, uh, you know, go to the gym after work or something like that, or maybe do like, you know, I have like the X3 bar, like sort of the, the band workout stuff at yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. And so I'll try to do that. I haven't, I've, I've been a bit, a bit lax in the last uh, couple of months, but that's what I usually try to do is I try to do something. And, and then after I work out, then I'll, then I'll eat like a big meal. I'll eat like a you know, big fatty ribeye, usually like a kilo or so uh, on a normal day. If I'm working out, it could, it could be easily be double that. 
Mm. You know, so I might eat like two kilos of fatty oh, really? meat. Really? Yeah. So I, I usually try steak. to get just steak, man. Yeah. Steak and just, eggs. Just red, just red meat. Yeah. You don't Mostly. Yeah. Not 90% of what I eat is did you just, touch, did you touch fish? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, but you know, I, I feel the best on beef. And you know, the, what, what I tell people is if you're doing a carnivore diet, you know, eat the meat that you enjoy makes you feel the best and that you can afford. For me, that's beef. I, I, I definitely feel the best on beef. Yeah, I would, I would, uh, that's you agree. I would, yeah. 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 Beef, you can't really get bored of beef. Can you, if you get some no. nice, good grass fed Australian, you know, New Zealand beef and yeah, you can't really go wrong to be honest. No. Yeah. No, it's, and yeah, it's fantastic. And like, you know, the thing is two people say like, well, don't you ever get, do you get bored of just eating the same thing? It's like, no, you know, like, does a cow get sick of eating grass? Does a lion get sick of eating gazelle? Like, no, they're, they're fully into it every time yeah, they do it. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, and the, and the reason being is that, you know, you get, you get a positive feedback in your taste when you're hungry. Yeah. And yeah. so when your body wants those nutrients more, they taste better. You know, yeah. there's old saying that, you know, the best seasoning is hunger, yeah. you know, like things just taste better then. And, and that's true. So, you know, your, your hunger signals change a lot when you go carnivore as well, because you're not eating car, uh, carbohydrates, carbohydrates change your, um, your, your, your hunger signaling pathways. And so you, you will overeat, you will overeat. And this is why people gain weight. It also puts you into a fat storage metabolism, whereas you stop eating carbohydrates, you only eat meat, you'll go into a fat burning and fat utilizing metabolism, which is why I always have energy because I always have access to my fat stores. So I'm always producing more and more energy. And, um, you know, so, you know, when you're, um, oh Christ, I lost my train of thought. What was I, what was, how did I start that? <laughs> Sorry. Um, energy, 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 energy. Talk about your energy when you're training and stuff. Yeah. Well, so when, when I, well, I, I do have to just sort of boundless energy when I'm, when I'm, uh, just eating meat because you know, you're not, you're, you're able to utilize and mobilize your, your fat stores and things like yeah, that. Yeah. And so, um, but it, when, it, when, um, oh, that's what I was saying about with, with taste. So when I tell people, because your hunger signals change very dramatically. And so when you're not eating carbohydrates, you never feel hungry in the same way. So people tend to under eat because well, I'm just not hungry. Um, and then they'll start getting cravings and carb cravings. That's when they'll, they'll bounce off of it. And they'll yeah, say, yeah. Well, well, that's, Whereas, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the cravings sh should really tell you that you are hungry, you know, and that you actually should eat, eat some meat, but I go by taste. So, you know, what I tell people is like, if you're just feeling a bit off, or maybe you think you might be hungry or just a bit tired, or maybe you're having some carb cravings, you know, try eating a steak. If it tastes good, that means you're hungry. Your body's giving you positive feedback so that you should go eat. And you should eat until it stops tasting good. Because when, you know, when I start eating, I'll, I'll, make, I'll usually make more than I think I'm going to want. And also make this big, big steak or maybe two big steaks. And I'll start eating it. When I first start eating it, because I'm hungry, it's, it's like the best thing I've ever eaten in my life every <laughs> single day. So I never get tired of it because every day it's like, oh my God, that's you're looking amazing. forward to it. Yeah, you're looking forward yeah because like, that has all the nutrients that my body wants. My, my brain is telling me like, get it in you. And so yeah. I'm eating. And it's like, it's the best thing I ever ate, best thing I ever ate, really good, good, good. It's okay. And I get to a point where I just go, I'm really just not enjoying this. You know, okay. and I just naturally want to stop, but it's yeah. the same meat cooked at the same time on the same conditions. Why does it taste different? Well, because my, yeah, now I'm not getting those positive feedback and I'm actually start, you can start getting negative feedback. You know, I have patients that are just used to eating very large proportions and when they're trying to lose weight. And so they're eating meat and they're like, I hate doing this. I have to force myself for two hours to finish this meal. I'm like, well, you know, your body's, I was like, does it taste bad the whole time? Even at the beginning, they're like, you know, well, no, actually it tastes really good at the beginning, but then I get halfway through the meal and it tastes horrible. I have to force myself. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, that's, it's your brain telling you to stop, you know, you're done then, you know, yeah. you don't, you don't just, you can't just eat anything that you see. And then that's okay. You, you go by your tastes yeah. and you go by how much you actually want to eat. So I tell them, eat as much as you want to eat, yeah. but you got halfway through there and you had to force feed yourself for two hours. You clearly did not want to eat that, yeah. you know? So that makes sense. that's yeah. how you should listen to it. Yeah, it's perfect. So, I mean, I personally have a, you know, a balanced, you know, you know, diet, obviously it's, it's very high in protein. I eat over 200 grams of protein a day, high fat. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've never done a carn carnival diet, by the way. Um, that's why I want to get you on there as well. So I do have carbs and I have carbs around my training, right? So, I mean, for guys listening, so glycogen is obviously stored in muscle, right? That's where you're getting your energy from. That's where you're getting your power. So how do you replenish your sort of glycogen levels when you're yeah. only eating meat? 
Yeah. So, so the thing is, is that you'll be constantly replenishing them. Right. Where uh, there's, there was, there's actually studies going back, um, you know, with, with, with human physiology, but even back in like with wolves in 1981, um, because the idea was that you needed to eat carbs in order to burn carbs, right? Um, except for the fact that really no animals in the wild, except the ones that like eat like you know honey and, and nectar, actually run on carbs. You know, like. Um, and so they're looking at wolves and they said, well, you know, wolves don't carbo load before they chase caribou for 10 hours. So, you know, do they have blood sugar? Do they have glycogen in their muscles and liver? And they found out, yes, they do. And it's rock solid. It does not change. And so no matter what they're doing, no matter how hard they're working, no matter how hard, what they've done, it is here. And that's because they're constantly replenishing it from their fat stores. And so, you know, and, and, and sort of how I said, like no animal in the wild really runs on carbs. You know, we give carbs and grains to cows in order to fatten them up and they get that intramuscular fat. We get that too. And that's why, you know, bodybuilders will sort of bilk up and their, and their muscles will sort of swell up because A, they're feeding, they're getting a lot of glycogen. That's true. And that can brought, draw in some water, but also they're getting intramuscular fat. So they're getting that marbling in their muscles as well. And that's why it goes away pretty quickly when they're in their cutting phase, you know, because it's not lean muscle mass. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, even, even cows or herbivores that eat fiber, they're not actually getting the, the carbs from that. They can't actually break down the fiber. No vertebrate animal can break down fiber. So the bacteria in their gut is actually what eats the, the fiber. And then they actually excrete their waste are short chain fatty acids, which are hundred percent saturated. So that's what the animal absorbs. And then the bacteria die off and they absorb those as well. And that, and so they're getting 70, 30 fat to protein, sometimes even 80% calories from fat, 20% calories from protein. And these are big, strong animals, right? And then 66% of animal species in the world are carnivores. So they're not eating carbs either. They're eating animals with fat and they're going for the fat first. So if you think about it bio biochemically, and obviously look, I, I mean, I played sports, you know, my whole life growing up. And then, you know, five years of my 10 year career uh, with rugby was, um, you know, eating normal, a normal diet, meat heavy diet, yeah. but normal. And then five years of that was was just pure carnivore. And I can tell you there's a massive, massive, massive difference between uh, the two. And so when I was just carnivore and now being just carnivore again, like my, my strength is just out of control. I can train nonstop. My recovery is super fast. I don't get mm -hmm. sore anymore. I do not get sore from working out. I, I put this to the test. I tried to blow myself out. I did 32 sets of squats to failure. Oh, God. And I, I was not sore the next day. Yeah. I went hiking up a mountain and went to rugby practice that night. The next day I was still not sore day after that, two days after, you know, I could tell my legs are like, mm, did a lot of work, but they're not sore. And I went and had one cup of coffee. I was like, okay, what does coffee do for me? You know, can I, I haven't had coffee in a while. Let's see what this does to my body. Within 20 minutes, my back was stiff. My legs were sore. I'm like, Oh God. Oh, I can oh, actually really? feel it happening in real time That's strange. because it's actually those inflammatory factors and those poisons that are in plants that are trying to warn you away that actually make you feel bad. And that's the plant's way of telling you, go away. Don't eat me. I'm, I will make you sick. And I was sore for two days after that. I'm like, right, <laughs> you know, none of that. And so I, I don't get sore anymore. You know, my energy levels are absolutely through the roof. You know, I, the harder I push myself, the more I get, you know, and I recover way faster. So when I was, when I was playing rugby, I had, a, I had a mission. I was just like, I'm going to be at the front of every single drill, every single sprint, every single, every, even the warm up lap at the beginning. I will be in front every single time. And I did that. And because I pushed myself as hard as I could every time, you know, my, my performance just went way up, way past everyone else around me who was training with me at the time yeah. because I was working so much harder and my body was getting so much more out of it. And so if you look, if you go just to dip into the biochemistry of it real quick, when you're eating carbohydrates, you know, like I said, you 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 go into a fat storage metabolism, right? Because your blood sugar goes up, which is actually bad for you. This is what kills diabetics. High blood sugar actually, yeah. these glucose molecules actually physically fuse to other molecules. They do that to the and cholesterol it, molecule, damage that, and it ages you a lot quicker as well, right? It does. Yeah, you get yeah you get these um yeah you a lot of oxidative stress and uh, and yeah. these, these aging radicals. Yeah, uh, it, it's actually very harmful to you. So this is this is what kills diabetics is just just having chronically high blood sugar. Um, so in a defensive pattern, I feel it's more defensive. Your body raises insulin up in order to get this down as quickly as possible, but your insulin stays up quite high when you do this. And so it can actually stay up for about 24 hours. 
And while your, your insulin's up, first of all, it's blocking a hormone called leptin, which tells your, your brain that you don't need energy. That's and right. so your brain thinks, oh, we need more energy. So you keep overeating. That's one of the reasons that it makes you overeat. But when, when insulin is high, insulin forces energy into cells. And it's it a stressful, it sorry, and it's a stress hormone as well, right? Leptin, right? It can be, yeah. And it's also, it also just dampens your metabolism. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, yeah exactly. So it's, it's a stored. So people will like, you know, take a bunch of insulin. And, you know, sometimes bodybuilders will actually inject insulin yeah. because they, they're thinking this is driving this into cells. Now that that may be true, but I think it's I think it's counterproductive for a lot of reasons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also just being obscenely dangerous. Stupid, you know? Yeah. yeah, very. And so, you know, when your insulin is up, you're forcing energy into cells. You can't, it doesn't allow it to come out of cells. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that you have this muscle glycogen, you have this liver glycogen from eating a bunch of carbs, but that's it, right? When you run out of that, that glycogen, your body's not replenishing it. Your body's not, you know, putting it back in, uh, from your fat stores. You can't, and this is what hitting the wall is you, you work and you work and you hit the wall and you go, Oh, that's it for me. Most people stop there. You know, you'll have like distance athletes, endurance athletes, they'll hit the wall and they'll, and they'll tell you that you push, you push, you push. And then eventually you can break through the wall and you get to the other side, you get your second wind and your runner's high and you have all these euphemisms for what's going on. And then you, and you can just go forever. Well, what that is because because of the, because of the fat storage, right? You, you got, you got, you got so much reserve. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because, because if you think about it, normally it'd take 24 hours for your insulin to go down. Yeah. But if you force the issue, you will, you will drive into that fat burning metabolism. So now all of a sudden you have access to all your fat stores and now you have all the energy in the world because you or I with a, you know, you know, relatively low body fat percentage, you, you, we, neither of us need to eat for the next two weeks before we even start dipping into our muscle mass. Like we will just, we will just use the fat stores that we have. And as long as you're burning ketones, as long as you have ketones available, you won't catabolize your, your muscle tissue. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so that's, that's what that is. So biochemically, on carnivore, you live in the second wind. You will always be in your runner's high because you're always able to mobilize your energy store. So sitting here talking to you, I am mobilizing and burning the exact amount of energy I need here to sit here and talk to you. I go and work out, that increases because I will, I will burn the exact amount of energy that I need to do whatever I'm doing. And when you burn energy, you feel better. This is why we take stimulants. This is why we drink coffee and pre-workouts. You could get that pump mm. up and you can go do something where I get that pump if I start working out. Okay. And, that, okay. and that's why I like working out. And that's why I don't want to stop working out because the harder I work, the more energy, right, I burn, right, the better right, I right. feel. The harder yeah. I want to work, the better I yeah. feel. So yeah. when you get a positive feedback loop for I'm hard getting, work. You're motivating me. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm going to train <laughs> after this, by the way. So yeah, so, yeah. Um, just yeah. wait. Just wait. You're on this. It's quite. It's quite interesting, um, personally as well. Um, so how much? How much meat are you talking, Ant? Like, because obviously I, I get quite hungry, right? I'm sure you do. Um, well, you probably don't no more, but obviously, <laughs> you know, I've got a big appetite. So for me to do this, for example, let's use me as an example. Like, how much meat? Are you talking about that? I probably have to consume a day to feel energized, to get a good pump, to get recovery, not to get hungry. Like, what what, what are we sort of talking about here? Half of 750 grams of steak or, you know, with butter and like what? Probably more, especially, you know, especially for, you know, a big guy like yourself, especially if you're, you know, you're working out a lot. Like, so I'm, I'm, I'm six foot three. I'm about, you know, 105 kilos at the moment. So that's like, uh, 225 230 something like that yeah um you know and and just for maintenance you know i need i need like a kilo of a meat kilo. So like a thousand steak. grams of fatty meat of fatty steak and are you right? cooking are you cooking that in like like loads of butter and getting some other yeah. fats of it and stuff yeah absolutely so i'll, I'll cook it in tallow and um or, or just leave like the, the drippings in from the pan from from previous steaks. so i'll have like a bit of a layer of fat in there nice. and i'll cook it in that sort of grill it up it gets you know i i, I age my steaks i wet age i dry age yeah, I all these easy, yeah. <laughs> you know my fridge yeah, it's my, the only meal of the day so yeah. that's it so it's gonna be amazing so like you know my whole fridge is a meat fridge you know yeah, people yeah. have like a dedicated fridge where they, they age it that that is my fridge i don't have anything else in there going you to know? the supermarket is pretty easy for you then but isn't it huh? just get it, oh, it is. oh it's, it's get so it delivered <laughs> And or or you just buy a cow or half a cow and then that's it and you you eat for the the next two years you know and it's just like it's just right there all the time, and so it's it's so easy and that that's probably one of the best things about this is because you know I I've got so many hours of my day back where I'm not thinking about preparing or eating food, you know you know I just like I go throughout my day I have 
imminent amount of energy. I work, you know, a 12 hour shift at the hospital. I go to the gym, I rip out two hours. I have to drag myself out of there because I don't want to leave. And then I go and I go yeah, just yeah. make a massive steak. It takes yeah. me six minutes, three minutes on each side, perfect medium rare. Bang. And, and that's it. Happy and then days. I have this massive steak. I feel great. I'm never bloated. I never have low energy. I'm never not feeling my best. And that's what I really like about this is I'm always feeling optimized, mm. you know, and, uh, and, and when I wasn't doing this, I wasn't. And I'm, I'm even, even though that was normal for me and I was, you know, playing a lot of sports and doing a lot of things and, and being very accomplished in a lot of ways. I remember when I stopped doing, when I stopped eating plants and I was just eating meat, I looked at how much better I felt. I realized I'm like, man, I've felt like shit my entire life. You know, like this is bullshit. And I was, I was actually pissed that I haven't been doing this my whole life really? because I, I really do feel amazing. And I'm just, you know, now I'm just, I'm, I'm just happy that I know about it and I feel this way, but you know, there's a while that was just, I was just really upset. I was like, this is, this is nonsense. You know, like we've been robbed of our birthright of feeling like this all the time. Mm-hmm. And that's, and that's why I'm trying to like, sort of get this out there so that, that people don't have to have to suffer anymore and they can yeah. actually start feeling optimal. Yeah. So obviously I mean, in terms of weight loss and getting lean, I mean, you don't really, you can't skip eating meat, right? It's, no. I mean, I, I have a few jokes, you know, as we all do, like, you know, if you, if you wanted like a, a physique, like an 11 year old girl, you know, turn vegan, right? <laughs> um, have a few little, yeah. few bits of content I've posted, you know, it gets, yeah. people, gets people going a little bit, doesn't it? Right. So, yeah. I mean, and, I, and you know, I stand by that. It's pretty much, there's nothing but the truth right i mean you mm. look at these you look at these you know these little guys being vegans you know they're little spawny and like but then you do get the old guy that you oh, i'm vegan you know he comes out he's a bodybuilder but he's been doing it for like six months and he's probably yeah, lying. he's probably lying about it you know um, yeah or yeah. or he's like genetically genetically gifted right which is like maybe one percent out of the population yeah. right that's i think that's the only the only other sort of way it happens so i mean just scientifically tell us like how detrimental is it not to eat meat if you want to, you know, get stay lean? Yeah. So, so the thing is too is that uh, you know a lot of those vegan bodybuilders. The good thing is is that uh, steroids they're taking are steroids. <laughs> they're taking yeah. steroids. Are. They are. They actually they're, they're, steroids are actually derived from plants. Most of these things. Yeah. And so, so they're they're technically vegan. So you know they're they they're not lying. You know. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, but no, you're right. I mean, most of these guys have been eating meat their whole life, and then they turn vegan. They're like game changers, guys. Those guys were vegan oh, for about God. 13 minutes. And, uh, and then that was your, that was your worst, that was your worst nightmare, wasn't it? That oh show? I bet you got like, that and like, like that and like, you know, oh, there's so many propaganda films that just like infuriate me. I've just stopped watching them now because I just get too pissed off. Yeah. And, um, you know, like what the hell? That was just, that was just oh, nonsense. Yeah. It was just pure nonsense. And, um, but yeah, so, um, as far as fat, as far as, um, you know, fat burning is concerned, like, sure, you can have a skinny vegan, um, and you can have a fat vegan, you know I mean? Vegan just means no meat. But, you know, Oreo cookies and heroin are vegan, you know, right? And they're both plant-based, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can be a vegetarian who, you know, shoots heroin and, and, and eats Oreo cookies all day, you know? And, and, and smokes that's, and drinks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it smokes tobacco, which is a plant, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a nightshade. It's in the same family as potatoes, tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers, you know? So it's... Um, it's, it's, it really obviously matters what you eat, right? And so a vegan can, can do better than like a standard American diet because the standard American diet is shit. You know, yeah. it's a bunch of processed crap with a Corn bunch of sugar syrup. in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, if you cut out the sugar, you're eating whole foods yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, you will absolutely be more healthy. Uh, and especially if you're eating eggs. I know, you know, the people can sort of maintain that for a while just by getting that. Eggs are um, amazing, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they are. And, uh, and there's tons of studies. I mean, even like showing like in the third world countries, like if you just gave your kid one egg a day, that's it. One egg a day, yeah. you, incru- you would increase like an uh, IQ scores by something like 20%. Oh, wow. that's, it, it, it's yeah. crazy the amount of difference that it makes. Um, you know, getting choline and the yeah. protein and the fats for the brain is so important. Just one egg a day. Yeah. And actually you have to just change these people's lives. I know. I and, know. Yeah, it's it's really bad. But as, as far as just just fat loss and fat burning is concerned, when you eat carbohydrates, you raise your insulin. Insulin forces energy into cells, doesn't allow it to come out. So as soon as you eat carbohydrates, you have locked down your fat stores for 24 hours. This is where intermittent fasting comes in. They're waiting out the clock on that insulin, and then so that's when they they do their workouts right before they eat, and then they eat this whole big thing, and then they're having all these cravings and starving, all these sorts of things, uh, and they feel pretty miserable. But 
then they get through it and they, and they get good results. And that's the thing, but they're, you're working against yourself. All you have to do is not eat, not eat plants, not eat, certainly not eat carbs. And you'll just always be in that metabolic state. You'll always have that low insulin yeah. state. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so that's a major thing is that, you know, if you want to lose weight, just don't eat carbs. It, it, it really is as simple as that. It gets better when you're, when you're going, but you have to, you have, here's the thing people get wrong, right? You have to eat enough protein and fat. Yeah. If you, oh yeah, yeah, if, yeah, if yeah you, absolutely. If you, if you skip carbs and you, you know, piss around eating a little bit of chicken or a bit of fish, then you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna be in a bit of a bad state. So you have to eat you enough. Will. You have to, like you said, up to a kilo, right? Kilo mm. of fish, kilo of meat. Um, yeah. But it's interesting about the egg thing because yeah, my little, my, I have a two, two and a half year old girl, and she, yeah, she has, she has scrambled eggs every morning. Um, she actually eats two eggs most days, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's good. Um, but I mean, just to sort of put that in a sort of a nutshell. So guys, it's not, it's not the fat that's making you overweight or yeah. raising your cholesterol or, you know, your, your health implications. It's the sugar. It's yeah. the sugar. Like the, like you said, the American diet's absolutely, I mean, they're literally just killing people over there, aren't they? Mm. Um, you know, like corn syrup, you know, like all yeah. that sort of shit is just absolutely ruining people. So it's not, it's not the fat, it's not the eggs, it's not the meat, it's not the oils. Maybe, you know, maybe your seed oils, they're obviously yeah. atrocious. Um, absolutely, yeah. But, you know, it, it's it's the sugar that's, you know, absolutely running you into the ground, right? Especially if you're getting up in the morning and having like a fucking ration with a, you know, a, a coffee with or tea with two sugars in it, all right? Or yeah. I, I know one guy has a Cinnabon in the morning. I'm like, oh my God. Mm. And then he thinks having a steak at night is going to raise his cholesterol so Jesus Christ. that's where people yeah. were going, getting it you know getting it wrong right so yeah, I think that, you, yeah. you're completely right you know i mean your fat and, and protein are the nutrition you know like like i i said earlier uh herbivores and carnivores get 70 to 80 percent of their calories from saturated fat saturated fat makes the animal kingdom go around that is a fact you know and so fat does not make you fat Fat makes you lean, strong, and healthy. When you eat fat, it actually triggers your fat cells to release fat because you're telling yourself, we are, we are in a time of plenty. We just killed a mammoth. We're, we're good, guys. We don't need to store this. When you start restricting, calorie restricting, and eating carbohydrates, carbohydrates will instantly reduce your basal metabolic rate by, on average, 300 kilocalories a day. So if you have 2,000 calories include with carbs included and 2000 calories without carbs included one will store calories store fat the other will burn fat because you your basal metabolic you will literally burn 300 calories less if you just eat carbohydrates eating the same amount of calories and then when you restrict calories past where your body wants them to be your body will just go oh okay we got to shut it down then because we don't have the resources it's sort of like like a, like a budget, you know, you have, you have a budget come in like, Hey, we, yeah. we didn't make it. We didn't have it uh, very good this month. So we gotta, we gotta, you know, so tighten, tighten the belt a bit, Throw it back, you know, yeah. Yeah. and, and then you ha have a good time. Like, Hey, yeah, we can, we can buy that Nintendo switch. Why don't we do that? Yeah. You know, and that's how it, your body does it as well. Yeah. Um, you know, instead of like, you know, people just buying things on credit all the time, it is actually responsible. Your body's responsible with its energy yeah, uh, because if it's energy. not, you die, you know, if you, if you blow a bunch of energy in the wild, you're going to die. You're going to run out of resources. And that, and, and so, you know, your body's very, very efficient. And so yeah. if you don't eat enough, just like you say, and of the things that you need, which is uh, protein and fat, you, you will reduce your metabolism. And yeah, maybe you'll, maybe you can offset it a bit. And so you'll maybe lose weight faster, but it'll, it'll come at the penalty of, of slowing down your metabolism, which will take a very long time to ramp up. There was that show, um, the greatest loser, where they had yeah. like they were just starving themselves and exercising like hell yeah. and it was just like, it was just right you know, wretched yeah and so they actually measured their metabolic rate was very low it's just just tanked right and so they had to maintain a really really low caloric intake and and a horrible lifestyle because or else they just they just balloon back up um because their body's just like we're starving we need to maintain ourselves we're in the middle of a, of a siege and we're having to eat boots and rats for the last two years so we gotta you know we gotta hold it down um, they checked them six years later, six years later, oh. the metabolism had not recovered. Wow. Okay. So part of that's going to be because they've just sort of adopted that lifestyle, you know, like they're just yeah. having a shitty lifestyle, yeah, but, yeah. but also it causes serious damage. So when you, when you're actually eating fat and actually eating protein in to the point that your body wants it, right. And your body's going to tell you, this doesn't taste good anymore. Stop it. We got this. 
So it'll tell you, it'll, it'll, it'll keep you in a you know caloric deficit, if you want to call it that, because your body will prioritize burning your body's fat if you have excess fat tissue, mm-hmm. right? And so it'll tell you, hey, that's enough. And you know, when I was, when I was doing this about five years ago, I had extra fat on me. Um, but you know, I, I lost, first of all, I just stopped eating greens and I lost 23 pounds in 10 days by quintupling my calories. I was eating lean meat and a bunch of vegetables. I stopped same, eating the vegetables. Same calorie intake? I was eating way more calories. Oh, right. Way more calories. So I was eating a ton of vegetables and I was eating very small amounts of lean meat, right? Because I was just like, I was trying to slim down. I just got back from doing humanitarian work in Bangladesh. I was volunteering in the refugee camps with the Rohingya refugees who were coming over from uh, Burma. There was like a genocide in Burma and, and they were escaped into, into Bangladesh. And so I was going there to help because like no one else was helping. And, um, and so I just came back. I was, you know, had, had extra weight on. I was probably like, I don't know, something like 270 pounds or something like that. Oh, that's um, quite a lot more weight. Yeah. 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 And then I, and I was just eating greens and just eating some meat. And I was sort of maintaining that. My water weight was sort of coming up and down between sort of, you know, around 265 to 270 something, you know, on any given day. As soon as I just stopped eating the greens, I was just like, you know, came around. I was just like, right, no, plants are trying to kill me. I knew this was right. I knew this was crap because I looked back and I said, like, no, humans are carnivores. I looked back like, that's why I felt so good all that, all that time ago, because like, that's what I was doing. I was living as a carnivore. I was eating what I was supposed to eat and I wasn't getting in all these plant toxins. And I was like, right, screw plants. And I just threw them out and I started eating as much fatty meat as I cared to which was a lot more. So now I was having like a kilo of very fatty ribeye melting butter yeah. into it, yeah. you know? <laughs> and so, and, and then I lost, um, like I, I dropped down to 243 pounds from around 265, 270 in 10 days. Mm. And then I stayed exactly there. I didn't, I didn't change my weight at all, but like, because I was working out a lot, I was stacking on muscle and shredding fat. Yeah. Yeah. And I could just, I could just see the difference just almost daily. And I, I was taking sort of monthly, you know, yeah, uh, because, sort of, yeah, fit, yeah sort of progress. Yeah, it. salmon's a good one for that as well. If you want to get that fat in, cool. Eating a lot of salmon, salmon right? Salmon and salmon's great. Yeah, salmon's about sixty percent calories from fat, which is which is pretty good. And yeah. you melt some butter on the top of that, you're you're right in the sweet spot. Yeah, you know, like a like a ribeye steak is around depending on how fatty it is. You know, like a fatty one is around seventy percent calories from fat. Lovely. And so yeah, eating that, eating the fatty fish, eating the fatty beef melting butter so, on it, it's not enough. so you don't go for like because normally i go for like the lean fillet so you are saying you get like a nice good fatty one on it and it's better mm-hmm. right obviously if you're not overeating loads of other shit that's going to be better for you than getting the leanest one is that right yeah well and you think about it this way it's it's the other shit that's always the problem yeah like, yeah exactly. you know people say it's like well if you're eating carbs then fat's a problem no <laughs> fat's always good for you fat is your main nutrient source right the carbs are what's bad Right. And so it's, it's just papering over that, but we're just in this mindset that if you eat fat, you get fat because you are what you eat. That's nonsense. That was all propaganda from, from the sugar companies pushing out this stuff that fat is bad for you and all these sorts of things. And so, because they've been trying since like the forties and fifties to replace fat with sugar, because they're saying that they, they were like, Oh, well, you know, it could be that it's more you know, profitable, isn't it? It's easier to it's make much, more, it's easy to make more money. Right. It's it is. Like, and because the majority of, of, of uh, Americans and Europeans and, and everyone's uh, caloric intake was, was from fat, you know, for time immemorial, right? And then they were, trying to, they were trying to get more market share. So they were trying to vilify fat and cholesterol and say, well, you know, it, it might be that this is bad. So why don't you just replace, but you need those calories. You have to replace it with something. So why don't you just replace it with sugar? Because it's an empty calorie, at least giving you the calorie that Cheap. you need. And, all this sort of <laughs> and it was just, it was just bullshit. And it was just, it was just for their bottom line. And, and we, we have hard evidence of this. This is not a guess. This is not a study where you had six people do this and eight people do that. And you're sort of comparing the two. This is, we have, this is a matter of historical record. You know, this happened. You know, we actually know we have that. We have their contracts. We know what they got paid. They got paid sixty five hundred dollars. That's equivalent of fifty grand right now, U.S. Right? That was what the 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 health of the world was worth to them. I mean, mm-hmm. it, was just, it was a pittance. You know, Ansel Crazy. Keys is another one. He was bought and paid for by these jag offs as well. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, he, uh, he 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 falsified data. He had something called the Seven Nation Study, where you had these seven nations as, as they had more cholesterol intake or higher cholesterol levels. They had higher 
uh, rates of, of heart disease. And it was like a parabolic curve. It was like an exponential growth, right? Yeah. And so they're like, oh, well, that's it. I mean, that, that, that just proves it. Well, no, actually that's just showing a correlation, first of all, and correlation does not mean causation, right? And so there's a correlation between ice cream sales and shark attacks. Does that mean that you know ice cream sales are, or, or people are just sad that their kid got attacked by a shark, so they buy them more ice cream? I'm like, no, it's nonsense. It's in the summer. It's hotter. You're going to sell more ice cream. You're going to go in the water where the sharks are. That's that's the relationship. They have nothing yeah. to do with each other. And that's the same with, with uh, cholesterol. So um, he had complete data for so like 22 or 23 countries, right? But he just omitted those. So he cherry-picked the data that, that fit his graph. And if you plot those core on there, it's a complete, it's, it's just a shotgun blast across the chart. There isn't even a correlation between cholesterol and heart disease. And now you can't show causation from correlation, but if you show that there is no correlation, that proves there is no causation because you have to have correlation to have causation. And so that's, that's the thing. There is not even a correlation between cholesterol and heart disease and these Bastards, yeah, so. interesting bro yes yeah, it's, it's so interesting Bunch um there. yeah i mean you, you nailed it to be honest pretty much there we, i mean there we go guys it's pretty much the carnivore diet explained to you know by a guy who's you know tested doing it researched it um and you know he's not not you know he's not a small guy you know he's been an athlete um you know quite, quite a big fella so it's not as though you know he's been wasting away doing this so you know <laughs> You know, so it's, it's good. So where, where can guys find you? And like, if they want to sort of go yeah. down that rabbit hole a little bit more, where's the, have you got any sort of, I mean, you do articles, website, where, where's the best guys for these guys to sort of get hold yeah. of you? Yeah. So, so my, my main thing is, is I have a YouTube channel. It's just Anthony Chafee MD. Right. And right. that's where I have like a lot of my videos. I have okay. um, some playlists put together where it even just says like, you know, carnivore starter kit. And I think that's like right, right. sort of the, the good place to get started, the, the really good basics where you really should know. I have a lot of other interviews and with a lot of other interesting people um, and, you know, researchers and scientists, cancer biologists and other experts that are showing nice. that all this stuff adds up in, in one direction, which is you should really not eat plants. You should eat a lot of meat um, and certainly no carbs or sugar. And so people can take a look at that and, and sort of go through those videos. Uh, I also have a podcast called the plant free MD, yeah. just sort yeah, of listen to back that. to that whole thing. Oh, thank you. And, um, and, and that has sort of the, the auto version of, of, of those videos really. And, nice. um, and so people can, people can go that. And if you just sort of start at the beginning of the podcast, it's sort of probably in a, in a good order and uh, we'll have a lot of, a lot of good yeah. information because especially when I was starting out, I was trying to get out really the main points that, that really the drove basics. the argument on, on what's going on here and why we're doing this and why it matters. Yeah. And, um, and then I have a, yeah, an Instagram, uh, channel, just Anthony Chafee MD as well. Yeah. And, uh, and I do a lot of posts, uh, there also. And if you go really far down, I actually did a lot of blog posts and, you know, had that, some fitness pictures, workout pictures, and, and I actually oh, wrote yeah. different things. Okay. What about the, you know, the, the, the blood type diet and what about fiber and what about this and what about that? And I had sort of those that went with it. Now they've been sort of drowned out by the, by the rest of the post, but I'm yeah. I also have a, a website that I'm building, um, which is called, um, the carnivore life. Right. And I'll be putting those up as blog posts as well. And so they will be a bit more accessible to people. Nice dude. Nice dude. Well, there you go, guys. I'll put your I'll put your podcast and your YouTube link in the show notes to this. So head over to that guys. And yeah, um, I think the YouTube sound pretty good. I think it's probably the easiest bet videos. I like watching videos personally. Um, so yeah, get stuck in there guys, but it's been a pleasure having you on and it's been a um, eye opener for myself as well. Um, and I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to give this a, a little bit of a go actually um, and Good. try it myself. So um, any questions? I'm sure Ant will answer any for you. Drop him a, drop him a sort of DM on his Instagram. Um, what's your Instagram, Ant? Yeah, it's just just Anthony Chafee MD. Right. And uh, yeah, happy, happy to to you know yeah. take your questions and I, I try to interact with people as much as possible. Obviously, sure. you know, sometimes you get a lot of uh, yeah. messages, and so I can't reply to everyone all the time, yeah, but yeah. I do the best I can. Yeah. Yeah. All righty, bro. Good to have you on, and I'm um, hoping to speak to you soon. So there we go, guys. Um, head over to his YouTube. I'll post the show notes and links inside there. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys logging on. Guys, do me a favor. If you're on the Fit Rich website, the landing page. And then you go over to Apple or you go to Spotify. Do me a favor, hit subscribe. I know a lot of people just listen. Don't hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And for you know a little bonus, you can be extra kind and leave a, leave a comment. That'd be great. But take it easy, guys. Have a great week. And uh, I will chat to you all soon. Take care, Ant.
everybody. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.